some strange signs are piling up, even as it gets harder and harder to find people in masks. In fact, when was the last time you saw the governor standing side by side with the state's chief medical officer? I turn again, as I have so often, to Dr. Jim Baker, Ruth Dowdone, professor and immunologist at the University of Michigan. Dr. Baker, thanks for coming in this morning. I'm, I, I, I mentioned Charlie LaDuff's column to you. I, uh, I know you read it. Um, he pointed out some weird anomalies. What, what were your thoughts about what we're finding? Well, what he's finding is that the rates of death ascribed to COVID are in fact a little higher than they were a year ago, despite all the measures we have yeah. to care for it. But it's because the pandemic's actually changed. We actually have at least 10 times as many infections right now as we had a year ago. Yes. We aren't counting them, actually, it's to be accurate. And what in fact, with everybody testing at home, do you feel like we have a real handle on how many cases there are at all? <laughs> no, and if you talk to people right now, everyone knows people who are infected, yes. people that, that are asymptomatic. It's one in 20 people that aren't having symptoms that are coming up positive. So that's a remarkable number. Yeah. And just the chance that someone like that would get sick from something else or die is fairly high. So we're seeing a lot of people who have incidental infections when they die. Whereas a year ago, everyone that died from COVID or two years ago had bad pneumonia and COVID was really the cause of death. So it's a different equation. And I've pointed out so many times that we understand the natural course of a virus is to become much more communicable and less deadly, which is exactly what you're talking about. Uh, even though there are more deaths, so many more cases. But why would Michigan be different than the rest of the Midwest or the rest of the country for that matter? Yeah, Michigan's numbers are a little bit out of line with the rest of the country if you look at it. But in fact, I think again, that's a counting abnormality. You know, there is a fair amount of uh, benefit to identifying all patients in hospitals with COVID. Financial uh, benefit. Yes, financial benefit, mm. but also, you know, you, you get benefit for the patient. The patient's family actually gets $9,000 if they die from COVID as compared to something else. So they've been very careful in, in doing these numbers. I really believe that we aren't seeing as many deaths from COVID as we had a year ago, but we're documenting a lot more people with COVID who are dying. Help me with that $9,000. Where's that coming from and what is it? Uh, uh, there's, it's a weird incentive, isn't it? Yes, it's a, it's a federal fund that's given and if you identify a person, the government gives you $9,000 to bury them. Wow, uh, I'm not sure everybody is aware of that. I know a lot of families have been through it and are, unfortunately. This course that, we're, that we've been on right now, obviously Omicron changed a lot of things and that's the, the, this new set of numbers would be more with Omicron. What are your worries right now about the next iterations and the evolving uh, situation that we see around COVID? I, I think there are two worries that I have. Number one is that we completely stop you know, monitoring the infection, which, which is not a good thing. Clearly, because the virus has changed and because we have much more immunity from both infections and from vaccinations, you know, we're much more comfortable with it. But there is the importance to see whether or not it would turn. I think right now, most of us believe that we'll continue to produce these low variants that may escape the immunity of prior infections and infect people, but will not cause severe disease. But we need to be careful about that. The other thing is what we do moving forward. Um, you know, the president the other day said we need to plan for the next, next pandemic, which I think is reasonable, but I don't think the idea is we go and build another DARPA and mm. create all kinds mm. of mechanical solutions. The first thing we need to do is look at the lessons learned from this episode. What did we do right? What did we do wrong? Which we've known all along we were only going to be able to do with great hindsight because it was such pioneer work that everybody was trying to figure out early on. What do you think uh, we would do differently now if, we, yeah. if the next one comes around? And, it, and we should note between monkeypox, there's an outbreak right now of yes. polio going on in the UK. Right. I mean, there are all kinds of health worries swirling around us right, right now. We're, you know, this, this will never go away. Yeah. And, and we're much more adept at monitoring 
monitoring it, but we need to understand the medical impact of it. I think one of the things we can look, do is look at other countries that have much lower death rates, and Japan is one. Japan has one-tenth the death rate per capita of the U.S. Uh, what did they do? They didn't shut down their schools. They didn't shut down their businesses. Certainly there were impacts on their health system, but they are a different population and, and they control themselves differently. They, they seek medical care earlier. The medical care is universally available, which helps. And the thing that's most interesting is that they focused on just a couple of things to control the pandemic. One was masking early on, and, and being Japan, everyone masked. Well, they in, were fa in fact, before the pandemic ever hit, if you'd ever traveled uh, through a Japanese airport, you saw a lot of people in masks long before it was cool. Right, it was, it, it was traditional to wear a mask if you felt you had a, a communicable disease. Not to keep from getting something, but to keep uh, from spreading something. Exactly. Exactly, right. yeah. exactly. What else? And the other thing they did was avoid concentrated events, you know, those super spreader type activities yeah. Yeah. where people are inside in poorly ventilated areas and could transmit with each other. And, and it's amazing, those two things done very well controlled the epidemic much more than it was here. So I think that's a good, good lesson. Especially as we know, it's now going to be debated hotly because we're moving into the midterm elections. It's going to be another political football, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It's become way too political. This is not a political issue moving forward. We need to have some type of general commission that's non-political, you know, look at this, see what we did right and wrong, and make recommendations moving forward. A million lives lost in the U.S., uh, 37,000 more than that in the state of Michigan alone. It's, it's been too much of a cost, no yes. doubt. Doc, it's always good to have you. I really appreciate the way you separate these things out for me. Thanks so well, much. Thank Dr. you. Dr. Jim Baker from the University of Michigan.